Before you get started with the lesson, let me give you a quick overview of how to use this series of videos. This is a series that covers Microsoft Office 2013 using documents, spreadsheets, and presentations. I'm a teacher. I work in Tolleson, Arizona at a high school called Westview High School. These assignments are selected to be exactly like what you would do in the real world. So using Office is what you'll use in a real office or in a real business. There is an assignment book that accompanies every video. Each page in the assignment book has a checklist of the things that you should accomplish in each lesson. Watch the video lesson to see how things are done. After you create your own document using the video as a model, you may have some modifications such as your own business names or your own paragraphs or your own data, but it'll look very similar. Now you can either watch the whole video through at one time or pause it as you go through it. Finally, print the document and your classroom teacher will grade it. So now, let's move on to your next assignment. Welcome to Assignment 4, Part 2. We're going to continue our work on this sales report for Europe. We're going to add some more data tables and also create a pie chart. The first thing I need to do is start a new page. You notice my cursor here is about a third of the way from the end of the page. I want to create a new page break. So let's go to Insert and we'll find a button called Page Break. It just starts us on the next line, the first line of the next page. I'm going to type in another paragraph about some data on some cities in Europe. Okay, now I'm going to start a new kind of table. This is a table that will just create the names of cities and how much they sold in each city and whether that was an increase or a decrease from the previous year. So let's type in a few names. Well, actually, I'm going to put in the title first, City. I'm going to press the Tab key, type the word Total Sales, and then another Tab key, and then the word Increase, or slash Decrease. Press Enter. Let's put in the first city, like Berlin, press Tab, and then put in a number, like 10,000. And I'm going to insert the Euro symbol again press tab one more time and then this I'm going to call this a 21 percent increase from the year before press enter put the next city in and so on until we have about five cities okay I've reached the end of my data now I need to format it so it looks a lot better this is very crooked the tab keys don't always space things out like you expect so what I'm going to do is highlight all of these lines here and go up to the ruler. The top of the page I'm going to find the ruler at about three inches and click the mouse and you notice the column lines up under three inches. That's because every one of those is preceded by a tab character. I'm going to go to five inches and add another tab. I'd like to align those tabs so that they actually show that they're in numbers or percents Right now you can see 10,000 is aligned on the left. I'd like to have it aligned on the right. To do that, let's go to the word design. I'm sorry, let's go to home. And let's click on paragraph. At the bottom of the page, we're going to click tabs. We have two tabs set. You can see one at 3 inches and one at 5 and 0.13 inches. Let's go to the 3 inch tab and I'm going to make this a right tab. This will align everything to the right. I'm also going to add a leader with some period numbers or periods and that will fill in a line of periods up to the tab. Notice that everything is aligned on the right side. I'd also like to adjust this one so that it is aligned to the right as well. So let's go back to the little paragraph formatting options, click on tabs, click the 5 inch tab and let's see what happens when we do this as a decimal tab and set a leader with periods and click OK. Notice the decimal tab. It aligns the decimals. So like at 21 percent, if I have a period there and put 21.0 percent, you can see it aligns quite well. If I have a negative 2 and I make that a 0.6666 percent, you see everything lines up as a percent. Now, let's go to the next table. Let's press enter at the end of this line and let's create a pie chart. So the next pie chart is going to show us the percentage of sales per country. 
So I'm going to choose chart, pie chart. If you'd like 3D, that's fine. I'm going to use 2D because they're easier to see. Click OK. Just like the bar chart or the column chart, we're given some data to enter. And let's make up some sales data for the various countries. Okay, you can see that I've entered some data for several European countries and then one at the end called Other. The pie chart shows the relative percentages of each country. So you see Germany is at 225. If I make that a little bit bigger, like 400, the blue piece of pie chart grows bigger. So let's change that back to 225. Let's put in a number here for sales like 2013. And then let's make some changes to the options. If you would like to make this a, if you'd like to have some data labels that show up inside the chart, there are options for that. So, different ways to show your data. You decide whichever you think, think is the best. Also for the legend, you can change that so that it shows up on the right side of the graph or the bottom. The chart title, you can take that away if you want to, makes the graph bigger. Okay, so my chart now shows the percentages of each country, but you notice the percentages are different than the actual sales numbers. So let's insert a table of these sales numbers. I'm going to copy this data just like you would with text, highlight each square, right click and choose copy. Copy is up here. Now I'm going up to above this chart here. I'm going to click there. I'm going to right click and choose paste. And the data shows up as a table. Now the table needs to be formatted so let's uh, go up to the formatting or design and let's pick some of the colorings that we could do in there. You can choose any kind of design that appeals to you. Orange, that's pretty orange. Uh, let's try something about like there, yellow. Also I'd like to center the table so I'm going to click to highlight the entire table. Click on this four arrowed icon and then there's an icon here that says center. This shows the actual millions of euros that we sold in each country. And then down below we show the graph with the relative percentages. Let's go to the top of the page and now we're going to show how we can create a header. So I'm going to click on insert and then over on the part that says header I'm going to click this button and let's try a blank header. We can put some information up here that will show up on every page in the document. So I'm going to type the word page and then the number sign and then over here it says we can choose a page number. So let's go choose top of page. Oh, I just erased the other page, the letters that I typed. So type in page again. Now over on this side I'd like to add a custom logo. All we're going to do with a logo is to create some of these shapes. So let's go to the insert command and choose some shapes. Now a company logo can have some very basic shapes like a triangle and then we'll try, try another shape here. Let's try a some kind of a rectangle or L. Let's make a different color. Let's make that one yellow and maybe one more shape to create the final effect. So something that would look like a company logo. Let's try that color. The last thing I need is a company name for the company logo. So let's go back to insert and this time I'm going to choose text box. Text box gives you a box that you can write in. So let's put my company name in there. What was my company? Was it Crystal Pools or something like that? And then the box is similar to a shape. You can resize it you can move it around the page and in this case I'd like to have the color that is filled as totally blank so I'm going to choose no fill and I'd like to get rid of that border so I'll go to shape outline and also choose no outline now I can move that so it actually shows up better over crystal pools and let's see I've got some text effects here Let, what could we do that would be interesting um, something more creative. Let's choose the uh, colors to be black. Let's make it a little bit larger. I'm going to select all the text and let's try the font size to be about 18. 
Notice the box needs to be adjusted as the text changes. It's getting closer to something interesting. Um, let's make this centered as well. So let's go to the home button, choose the centering icon, and move this box back toward the middle. Okay, so I have something like a company logo. Now go back to the header and footer tools, design tab, and choose close header and footer. What you will see that this turns gray, this kind of grays out as well. It's supposed to fade into the background. Page 1 is the first header, and if you go to page 2, you'll see that we've also created a header for page 2. Every page that you create will show a header, whether it's a drawing like your logo or the text like a page number. I think we're, fi we're finally finished. Let's save our report and print it.